Hi, everybody. Good to be back with you. I hope you're enjoying your summer as I am and uh, that you're all being safe. Um, I hope that you enjoyed last week's message. If you haven't seen it yet, you might be a little lost. I hope not. I hope to just kind of come out there fresh. But you might be a little lost because last week we covered the beginning of the chapter of uh, chapter 5 of Second Kings which talked about Naaman and um, Elisha and the healing of leprosy that uh, God granted through uh, Elisha for Naaman. And so I guess that's all you need for a, a refresher if you didn't see that last week. Um, so here's the scripture reading, and then we'll get to the sermon, which I've titled, Who Am I? All right, so... 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 19b, which is just the second half of verse 19, through verse 27. After Naaman had traveled some distance, Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said to himself, My master was too easy on Naaman, this Aramean, by not accepting accepting from him what he brought. As surely as the Lord lives, I will run after him and get something from him. So, so Gehazi hurried after Naaman. When Naaman saw him running toward him, he got down from the chariot to meet him. Is everything all right? he asked. Everything is all right, Gehazi answered. My master sent me to say, Two young men from the company of the prophets have just come to me from the hill country of Ephraim. Please give me a talent of silver and two sets of clothing. By all means, take two talents, said Naaman. He urged Gehazi to accept them and then tied up the two talents of silver in two bags with two sets of clothing. He gave them to two of his servants, and they carried them ahead ahead of Gehazi. When Gehazi came to the hill, he took the things from the servants and put them away in the house. He sent the men away, and they left. When he went in and stood before his master, Elisha asked him, Where have you been, Gehazi? Your servant didn't go anywhere, Gehazi answered. But Elisha said to him, Was not my spirit with you when the man got down from his chariot to meet you? Is this the time to take money or to accept clothes or olive groves or vineyards or flocks and herds or male and female slaves? Naaman's leprosy will cling to you and to your descendants forever. Then Gehazi went from Elisha's presence, and his skin was leprous. It had become as white as snow. Here ends our reading for today. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Man, pretty harsh, right? Or maybe not. Maybe he deserved it. Well, before I get into that, um, I want to play a game today. And it's called, Who Am I? And I'm sure I didn't create this game, but I just kind of made it up. Anyway, I'm sure other people have created this game far before me. But here's how it goes. I'm going to give you hints as to who a person is, and then you can try to answer the question correctly. And we'll have a different, have some different categories as well. Okay? Maybe, maybe this will turn into this big time game show. I doubt it. Okay. Moving along. Our first category is biblical people. I was a strong man with long hair. 
I killed a lion with my bare hands and went back some time later to discover bees had made a hive out of the lion's carcass. So I ate some of the honey as a treat and shared it with my parents without telling them where it had come from. Who am I? You want to pause it? No cheating. Okay. It was Samson. And you can read more about Samson in the book of Judges, chapter 14. All right, here's another one. We're still in the biblical people category. I was an ancestor of Jesus who was a prostitute. I lied to protect two Hebrew spies I had hidden on my rooftop. Who am I? Okay, well, I hope you guessed Rahab. You can hear more about Rahab by reading the book of Joshua, chapter 2. Oh, let's change categories now to historical people. I fought for France against England in the Hundred Years' War, was captured, convicted of heresy, and burned at the stake. 488 years later, I was canonized as a saint by the Roman Catholic Church. Who am I? All right. I can just hear you shouting out the answers. It's Joan of Arc. And I don't have a book for you on Joan of Arc from the Bible, that's for sure. So you're going to have to research Joan of Arc on your own. Our final category is present day people. Ready? Here's the last one. I'm a businessman who declared bankruptcy, was then given the lead role in a television program on how to flourish in the business world, and later was elected president of the United States. Who am I? Oh, yes, you may have guessed it. Donald J. Trump. All right. Well, that's enough for the game for now. Thank you for playing. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. So what does this have to do with our scripture reading? Oh, yeah, it probably should have something to do with it. Very good question. Let's take a look. Now, if you saw last week's sermon video, you'll remember that I told you Elisha refused payment for curing Naaman of leprosy. And I said he did so because it was God who healed Naaman, not Elisha. So who was Elisha to take any of that reward? He was just the messenger telling Naaman what God told him to have him do. So today we're hearing about he hi hey sorry he hazai oh my gosh I can't this I butchered his name again he hazai there we go who took it upon himself to claim the reward for himself through lies and trickery and when Elisha found out about these lies he confronted he hazai basically asking him to come forward and explain himself. But Gehazi would do no such thing. He was still trying to get his wit, you know, get away with the lie. He still thought he had gotten away with taking 150 pounds of silver, valuing at roughly $45,000 in today's market. And plus, of course, those fancy two new outfits. Don't want to forget about those. Did my question, I guess, today is, did he forget who he worked for? I mean, Elisha was a prophet of God. He had a direct line to God. Did Gehazi forget that Elisha once sent two female bears after 42 mean boys who made fun of him for being bald? That was their only crime. But he wasn't having it, so he sicked two bears after them. It didn't turn out well 
for the boys, by the way. Did Gehazi forget that Elijah could end a drought or bring someone back from the dead simply by asking God to do so? Well, apparently so. He forgot a lot about who he worked for. Because if he had remembered any of these things about his master, then why would he have gone after that money? I mean, who was Gehazi to deserve such wealth if Elisha wouldn't accept it? Now, unfortunately, it all came down to greed and covetous desire for Gehazi. All he could think about was those millions of dollars worth of gold and silver on its way back to Aram with Naaman and... Come on, he's not even a Hebrew. He's a Syrian. Come on, why do they get all the money? Why shouldn't some of that Syrian wealth stay here in Israel? Why shouldn't Gehazi have it if Elisha didn't want it? That's what was going through his head, no doubt. The answer to that is, it wasn't Gehazi's to take. If God had wanted him to have some of the riches, God would have told Elisha to accept some of it on Gehazi's behalf. But that surely wasn't the case. So God revealed to Elisha just what Gehazi was up to and let Elisha dole out God's judgment on him and his descendants. Now, I don't know, maybe maybe there aren't any of his descendants around any, or, anymore because it says that they will all have leprosy. Not that leprosy is wiped out by any means. It's still quite the, the curse in many countries. But still, if only Gehazi had asked him how, asked himself the simple question of, who am I? Maybe that self-reflective question is something that we all should ask ourselves once in a while. Maybe we wouldn't, we wouldn't get into so much trouble if we did. Had Gehazi asked himself who he was, would he have changed his mind? I'll put myself in his shoes, kind of like in the game of who am I, okay? Who am I? I am the trusted servant to a miracle-working prophet of God. My family and I are taken care of by God through my service to this prophet. Do I want to risk shame or worse? death by telling lies and deceiving others? Hmm. I think Gehazi would have changed his mind if he had asked himself, who am I? So what about in our own lives? Will this work for us? Asking ourselves, who am I? Well, let's give that some thought. Let's, I'm going to put myself in a scenario. This isn't my scenario. I made it up. Okay. This is, this is, I'm not thinking of any particular individual when I put, use this scenario. There. I made that disclaimer clear, right? But let's just say, if I were living from paycheck to paycheck in a job I was frustrated with and the company I was working for cut my hours, and I was so upset about it. Should I quit my job right then on the spot to make a statement, or should I wait? So I'll ask myself the question, who am I, and we'll see where that discussion takes us. So who am I? Well, I'll say I'm a woman with bills to pay and mouths to feed. You can barely make it as it is. I'm living paycheck to paycheck. And I wish I had a job that would provide 
me and my family with a more stable income so we can you know, breathe a little easier and plan for the future. I know I can't afford to miss a paycheck, so I'd better start hunting for a new job that meets my needs and the needs of my family. And I guess I won't quit immediately out of anger if these are my circumstances then, right? Yeah. Sometimes you gotta take those hurt feelings and process them before you act on them. Now this process of who am I can be used for couples having relationship issues or business owners who are having a high turnover rate in their company. It can be used by parents who are struggling with how to talk to their teenagers. The list goes on and on and on. Who am I? How will others see me? How will God see me? Maybe the ideal question would be, whose am I? Because the answer for believers will always be God. And if we are God, we should be doing our very best to live our lives as trusted and loyal servant. Do you know why no one is named Gehazi these days? Well, number one, it would always be mispronounced. That's my conclusion, but I think you know why. Nobody wants to be thought of as disloyal or cursed by God. Always remember who you are and whose you are. And trust that you will make the right decisions as you live to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And Amen. Have a great week, everybody. And God bless you.